championship. Yes! They are the Ely Grand Champions. What a show. <laughs> Turner Sports. Arch Madness has arrived. History about to be made. And here we go. This is the best environment in all of sports. Electricity in the air. This is the beauty of this tournament. For the Mount from Mount St. Mary's, it began 1-11, but it ended with a spot in the dance. One of four teams since 85 to begin that way and end this way. They are here from the Northeastern Conference in our first four. So are the privateers from New Orleans. First appearance since 96, one NCAA win in 87. The Southland, the coaches poll before the season had them ninth. Not so much. They are the tournament champions. They are part of the first four. The tournament begins right now. The vision of the players and coaches getting off the bus. The first four in a pair of 16 seeds in the privateers in New Orleans and the Mount from Mount St. Mary's as we get you ready to begin the dance. The time is finally here. The NCAA tournament begins right now. A doubleheader as we get you inside our Atlanta studios. It is our infinity NCAA tip-off show Welcome and happy tournament time, everyone. Casey Stern, alongside my crew, Seth Davis, Brennan Haywood, Wally Zerbiak. Such a big smile, Brennan. Does that mean you're excited about oh, this? Oh, he's got the big smile. It's the best time of the year, man. Call I know, he is. He's, he's I'm a happy guy. I'm now, a happy guy. Are, true. You want to change any of your picks? This is the last time you could do it. Absolutely not. I give myself five minutes before the start of the selection show to fill out my bracket. And once it's down in ink, it stays there, Casey. All right, we stay here. We will keep you posted on everything happening throughout the course of the tournament from here in Atlanta. But let's look back before we move forward. Let's start with the guy to my left. Brandon, what do you remember about Hello. the first time you stepped on the court to play in the tournament? No, I just remember being excited, being happy to be in the tournament, uh, get a chance to represent my school. It was always a dream for me to play in the NCAA tournament and have a chance to compete for a title. You know, you look at uh, North Carolina, obviously a team, and you made two Final Fours, expected to do well here in this dance. But a lot of teams, especially those playing tonight, Wally, are hoping they could dream. And you did in 99 as a 10 seed. What do you remember about that run? Uh, it was tremendous. I could have only dreamed to have played in the Final Four like Brendan, though. But we had a nice little run to culminate my senior year. And, um, you know, it's just, there's nothing like it because you don't know how hard it is to, one, get in the tournament from a small conference in a mid-major, let alone to get in there and beat Washington and then beat a two-seed Utah. Memories I'll never forget and bonds that I'll never forget from that team. And 43 in a game, yeah. right? First Ooh. round. Yeah, see? 43 of the, well, the, they, they weren't double teaming me, so the coach just kept calling my number. And we know you're not we, we, know, we know you weren't going to pass <laughs> it. <laughs> we know you weren't going to pass it. <laughs> At least I shot a high percentage. Well, we only throw him the ball so much. Let's throw <laughs> to you what we're expecting tonight and what you should get ready for at our double dick here on Tree TV. You've got Mount St. Mary's and New Orleans. The 16 seeds battling first, and then a dandy, Danny Manning, and Wake against K-State. Demon Deacons and the Wildcats get together round 9-10 Eastern time. 
You know, in the Northeast Conference, where they've never had a winner in the NCAA tournament, what a story we have with Mount St. Mary's. 1-11, and 11, as I said earlier, one of four teams since 85 to begin on that end of the spectrum and to get here. After years as an assistant with Shaka Smart, Jamie and Christian has brought mayhem like he had the havoc with VCU to Mount St. Mary's. He chats with Lewis Johnson about tonight's game. All right, Casey, thanks very much. Well, at the beginning of the season, this team began one and four, and so Coach Christian uh, decided to come up with a unique document he called Embrace the Good. On the front of this, he was writing things that were going well on the back, things that were needed to be fixed. What was it that you had to turn around that got this season going in the right direction and got you here to Dayton? Well, you know, so much about the game is about having a mentality and having the right mentality that the things you're doing right and your success or the ways you're going to be really good in life and on the basketball floor. And then just trying to marginalize winning by taking out things by things. Big thing we had to change just how physical we were playing defensively. And we did a great job of doing that. But it all starts with a mindset and the guys were able to do a great job of staying process driven, not result driven. All right. Uh, what concerns you about New Orleans here today? Oh, man, they're so physical. I mean, they're a good team and they're playing really good basketball right now. Won their tournament, obviously. They really compete on the glass and they played a big chip on their shoulder. So it's a great, great game here with two opponents who play very differently. One plays inside the three-point line. Love, love, one loves to play on the outside of it, that being us. So it's going to be a great contest. And what would it mean for you guys to win this game, hop a jet, and go deeper into the madness? Well, anytime you're playing in the month of March and have a chance to continue to practice, it's just a, a terrific feeling. And so what it means for our program would mean another postseason win would be the second one in our program's history and a chance for us to have a chance to continue to play great basketball here in March. All right, looking forward to that. And what I'm going to do, Casey, is tweet out a picture of the front and back of this document so everybody who loves to watch March Madness can see what Coach did to help his team get here and see if they can move on. Good luck today. Thanks so much. All right, Casey, back to you. All right, Lewis, thank you very much. They've got six homegrown players on this team. There's obviously some talent there, but it seems like Wally, as far as they go, will be how far Elijah Long will go. Yeah, both these guards are quick. They're athletic. They're small. They're small in stature, but not in heart. These guys can play. They can shoot from the outside. They want to play that they want to play that kind of havoc type uh, basketball where they speed the other team up a la VCU's havoc. They call it mayhem. There's Elijah Long. He does everything. He shoots from outside, drives the ball to the basket, can make plays for his teammates. So he's got to have a big game tonight, guys. Well, to piggyback on what Wally said, he's right. Elijah Long, Junior Robinson, Miles Wilson, they have to get it done. This team is as strong as their guards. Their guards account for 60% of this team's offense. This is one of the hottest teams in the country, won 18 in their last 22, and it all hinges on their guard play. Not a good rebounding team, one of the worst in all of college basketball, so their guards are going to have to carry them. Well, this is the type of team that Casey and I, I think, really enjoy because they have so little height, including the smallest uh, player in Division I hoops in Junior Robinson, goes 5'5". Five five. But, Casey, you talk about that 111 start. I think that's a little bit deceiving in the sense that Mount St. Mary's is one of the many schools at this level that depends on making a lot of money by playing what's called guarantee games where you play a road game against a major conference team and you get a nice check for your school so they've played at West Virginia at Iowa State at Minnesota at Michigan sure they lost all those games but they're certainly not going to be intimidated uh, by any competition that they face and big tonight for them will be getting to the free throw line. That's how they won their uh, conference championship game because we know they're not going to perform well on the glass. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing is during that trip, they traveled a third of the planet's circumference. I, I didn't do the math of that myself. It says it here. <laughs> I'm trying to sound smart, Brendan. Go with me. 8,236 <laughs> miles in an eight-game trip in which they lost all eight. They look good here. Now, for New Orleans, the interesting thing is we're so used to shot making and three-point shooting at this level this is the team in New Orleans, Brendan, that shoots the fourth least amount of three-pointers in the country. So they're going to try and grind it out if they're going to win this game. Yeah, this team doesn't shoot the three well at all, but they have Eric Thomas inside. He gets it done. He's a small big man, only 6'5", but he's a master in the mid-range, has a nice range at about 15 to 16 feet, really gets it done. He's doubled his scoring average. Now he averages about 20 points per game. They're going to need Eric Thomas to play well if this team has any shot tonight. I can't fathom this. You can still win basketball games without no threes. the threes? Yes, Wally, big men are important still, <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're being phased out, Brendan. Just to, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, th th it's definitely proof. New Orleans has proven it, that you can go inside. Uh, Eric Thomas is tremendous on the fast break and in transition. He can finish. And um, 
you know, they are going to have to make sure they dictate the tempo of this game because they don't want to get into an up-and-down game with the smaller Mount St. Mary's guards. Yeah, while we know that none of their players will be playing for any Mike D'Antoni offense anytime soon, <laughs> what do they need to do to be effective to win this game? Well, but look, I give them credit because they know their identity. I mean, they gang rebound. You know, in their championship game against Texas A&M Corpus Christi, they went 3 for 17 from three-point range, but they got 19 offensive rebounds. That's one thing that they do well. One thing they don't do well is take care of the basketball. 349th Ooh. in the country in turnover percentage, and that's going to be a big-time challenge for them tonight going up against Mount St. Mary's. If they can get the ball across half court, I think they're going to have a huge advantage because I don't see any way that the Mount can keep them off the glass. But right now, that's going to be a big if. Notice, by the way, with our one big, small big men, mm -hmm. Small guards. Yeah. See what's going on here? Yeah, All right, let's say guard guys, play. Guys like type of game. Guard play in the like tournament. The bigs against the guards over there. Guard play. When we come back, will we guard against the streak that ends six straight? Who will have the best shot in this first four to continue? One good trend. It's coming up next as we continue. The tournament has begun. The Infinity NCAA tip-off is sponsored by Infinity. Empower the drive. We get a look at the history of the first four. And even though people would look at it and say, well, look, these are the outside looking in, right? You got to win to get into the tournament. Not so much. These teams are already in and they go further. Every single year, we've had somebody from our first four go and win in the quote-unquote first round, if you will, their second game in the tournament, so... Your belt, get a win under your belt and go into that second game. Because your first game each year in an NCAA tournament, the nerves are definitely there. So I think that's why we've seen teams advance after winning in the first four and moving on in the tournament. All right, not that Nova fans need it, but good news, nobody on our panel picking our 16s to beat the Cats <laughs> in the happen. first round. Won't happen this year. Uh, not going to happen this time around, they say. What will? How about the bracket busters? Before you send them in, make sure to get with us and find out what our panel thinks are the right sleepers to pick. It's coming up next. You can watch live games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device. It is March Madness Live. You can get in at ncaa.com slash March Madness. Watch it now or download the app today. We take a look at what's coming up tomorrow. Another doubleheader right here on True TV as our coverage continues in the first four. NC Central against UC Davis and then the Friars of Providence against the Trojans of USC. We are wondering what 11s, 12s, and possibly lower seeds can get it done. It is always the biggest thing to do to find the upsets, we're talking bracket busters. And, Brennan, we begin with you. Where are you going for this? My bracket bust, I'm going to go with Wichita State. I don't think they were properly seeded. I think they should have been a little bit higher. And I think because they're a 10 seed, they're really going to give uh, some teams a hard time, especially uh, in the second round. If they have a chance to match up against Kentucky, I think that could be a very tough matchup. Wichita State is a very good defensive team. They only allow about 62 points per game. But they're, they're unique. Most defensive teams can't score. They're a defensive team that averages 82 points per game. They shoot the three very well. They have Shaq Morris inside that gives them a little bit of beat. This is a team that you don't want to run into in the second round if you're a high-seeded team. They're very scary. You also have, uh, you have Fran Camp that can shoot the three. They have several guys that shoot over 40% from three. This is a scary ball club. Yeah, they don't just beat teams. Beat them up. Second biggest margin of victory in the country, 19.6. Seth, how about you? We've been talking about them all year long. Middle Tennessee, one year ago, they pulled off the shocker of the NCAA tournament, beating Michigan State as a 15th seed. No one knew who these guys were. We know who they are now because a lot of these guys came back again, and they added a transfer from Arkansas into Corey Williams, a 6'8 power forward who can step out and shoot the long-range jump shot. They've been winning all year uh, in Conference USA. I like the matchup with them against Minnesota. Minnesota is going to be missing uh, its lone senior, Akeem Springs, uh, best perimeter defender. And then they could get Butler as a second-round uh, opponent. And Butler, to me, Casey, is one of those high-floor, low-ceiling 
uh, type of teams. I think they're good, but I think they're beatable. I like Middle Tennessee to go to the Sweet 16. Tough test for Richard Pitino's club. How about you, Wally? I like those picks. I'm going with the Bearcats of Cincinnati. They've struggled a little bit in the tournament in the past. Always a great defensive team. But this year, they can score the basketball. Average 75 points a game, led by guys like Jacob Evans. And Troy Copain is the key. Their point guard has to knock down shots and make plays. They've sputtered a little bit down the stretch, lost to SMU in the American Conference Tournament Championship. But I feel like this team uh, has, has a big time run in them. I think they have Final Four capabilities in, uh, and um, could make it to the Final Four. Uh, Coach Mick Cronin is in the ilk of... Um, of a lot of good coaching trees and Rick Pitino. So this team has the capability of going pretty far. You know, seeds make upsets because we look at the numbers. Does it bother you going back to Wichita State that they're a 10? Does that seem to make any sense to you? I think all our teams were misseeded. Yeah, I, I thought they were underseeded as a 10. But again, you know, if you look at their record and who they beat, it's not all that impressive. Their best win were uh, over Illinois State, who they beat twice. So they had a good schedule outside their conference, but they lost all their games. What they did was avoid the bad losses. I, I had them closer to an 8 or a 9, but it's hard to, for me to get really outraged over I'm just glad you picked one because you got Nevada, yeah. right? FGCU. Yep. I mean, you, you got you gotta have bracket busters. We could have just sat here the whole show. With you know, them. I, I, I uh, fortune favors <laughs> the brave. <laughs> so one of them, one of these years is going to be right. Speaking the kiss of Seth. Speaking of brave, going up against guys this size, brave for us types, like Junior Robinson, perhaps. The smallest player in the country at 5'5 could be the biggest on the court tonight. That we come back, we continue our Infinity Tip-Off show. Is he still taller than you? <laughs> I'm going to post him up. Sorry, aren't we a break, friends? Oh, no. <laughs> The Infinity NCAA tip-off is sponsored by Allstate, official protector from March Mayhem. All right, we've got the mayhem tonight and New Orleans, and we get later on in the back end of our doubleheader, Kansas State against Wake Forest. If you have not seen John Collins play, most improved player in the country, got to be up there in that list. I, right? I think he's the most under rated underappreciated player in the country he'll be a first round draft pick and score at the bucket and step away a little bit hit the offensive glass he's special how about special oh, right oh, here you see that move see that over at five, five? that's right move over spud webb nate robinson wow so you got that you got that. oh yeah like that, right? I, I did that during the break by the way there is mugsy <laughs> oh, why they have you shorter than them though? <laughs> that is disrespectful that is really somebody up. somebody yeah, stop. i need to speak to somebody that's just the camera angle y'all can't do my man the casey like that mugsy was on a ladder he's so. clearly 5'4 he's way taller than that that's really messed up <laughs> We are getting you ready for tip. It is New Orleans against Mount St. Mary's in the first game in our first four. We have picks, gentlemen. I got Mount Mayhem all the way. Three-point shooters, Long and Robinson, going to light it up from deep in the UD arena. I'm with Wiley. I'm going to go with the Mount. I love their guard play. They like the little guys. I'm going with the big fellas on the glass, the privateers. Get it done on the offensive line. The only wish you could have been We there. get it done in half. In the meantime, on the call to get the tourney started, Brian Anderson, Clark Kellogg, Lewis Johnson, now.